breaking overnight in our Sunrise Smart Start. A man is in the hospital following a late night shooting. Police tell us this happened on Kirkland Road around 10 o'clock last night. The victim, who is 21 years old, is expected to live. Police are asking anyone with information to call 911. Police are investigating a homicide in the city. Police tell us it happened at 3.30 overnight Sunday on North Plymouth Avenue and Ambrose Street. The victim, a man in his 30s, was pronounced dead at the hospital. We're told there are no suspects in custody. A 14-year-old is in the hospital after being shot last night. Police tell us the boy was shot on St. Paul Street around 640 last night. He's expected to survive. We're told there are no suspects in custody and anyone with information is asked to call 911. Five vehicles were damaged, including a Rochester police cruiser, after a crash on Park Avenue over the weekend. Police tell us the cruiser was traveling with lights and sirens when a vehicle pulled out in front of the officer. We're told the officer tried to take evasive maneuvers to avoid the crash and struck another vehicle from behind. The RPD car also struck a parked car, pushing it into more parked vehicles. We're told there were no injuries at the scene. Well, two people are dead, 11 more hospitalized following a crash that happened Saturday morning around 930 on 390. We're told the van's rear passenger tire experienced some issues and the vehicle exited the roadway, striking the median. One man died on the scene. The others 12 were taken to the hospital. A pregnant woman died from her injuries, but her baby was successfully delivered. State police have not released the names or ages of anyone involved in this crash at this time, and it is still under investigation. Well, Hillary is pounding parts of Southern California with high winds and heavy rain. Forecasters expect the storm could bring catastrophic flooding to large swaths of California. Palm Springs is under a state of emergency with Hillary dropping half the city's annual rainfall in just six hours. And to make things worse, a 5.1 magnitude earthquake hit Southern California yesterday afternoon. One man was forced to evacuate his home in San Bernardino County. It sucks to see it go, but lives can't be replaced. Material objects can. Well, the National Guard was also called to Nevada as that state is now in a state of emergency. Hillary came ashore Sunday in Mexico, and at least one person has been killed in the floodwaters. The death toll from the Maui wildfires is expected to keep growing. Hawaii Governor Josh Green told CBS's Face the Nation 1,050 people remain missing. Teams have searched more than three quarters of the area impacted by the fires, but the final recovery efforts could take weeks. President Biden and First Lady Jill Biden will visit the island later today to tour the fire damage and meet with survivors and first responders. Well, wildfires also triggered evacuations in the Spokane, Washington area and in British Columbia and the Northwest Territories in Canada over the weekend. A state of emergency was declared in Washington state because of the deadly Gray Fire, which has destroyed almost 200 structures. Canada is deploying the military to help as fires keep raging in British Columbia. The GOP is getting ready for its first presidential debate as eight presidential hopefuls have qualified to be on the debate stage, including former President Trump, who as of this point is sitting out. And while the former president deals with legal trouble, most recently being indicted with 18 others in Georgia in connection to an alleged plot to undermine election results in that state, he is leading the polls by a staggering amount with his closest competitor nearly 50 percent behind him. Well, eight people, mostly teens, were injured in a mass shooting in Minneapolis, Minnesota yesterday evening. Police say their injuries range from graze wounds to more serious injuries, but so far no one has died. Minneapolis chief of police says there are two suspected shooters and with 41 shell casings found at the scene, officials believe at least one assault weapon was used. The shooting happened in a neighborhood that police say was a known hotspot for drugs and violence. We'll take a look now at our sunrise traffic. Things looking pretty good out there this morning. All the major highways moving right along. No major slow ups to report at this time. Well, cannabis card licenses are on hold again as the Office of Cannabis Management faces another lawsuit. The lawsuit brought forward by four New York veterans saying the OCM's application process left them out of the mix. Now a judge says the office can't process or approve any pending card applications until a decision comes at the end of the week. Now business owners are concerned their businesses could shut down before they even get started.
I know we're struggling uh, pretty bad to keep the doors open uh, because of the lawsuits and what's been going on. We've been dealing with a lot of hurdles, you know, in, in this between the CGS and the dispensaries not opening. Um, I think we need a little bit more help from uh, OCM. And we're told that while businesses and the OCM wait for the decision to come from the court at the end of the week, another application deadline could be coming in September. Well, happening today, traffic in Henrietta might be a little bit busier as over 3,000 first-year students move into RIT. Officials with RIT say the students are coming from all over the country and from more than 45 different countries. The move-in process begins this morning at 8. It goes all day with the last scheduled arrival time around 6. Returning students move in tomorrow. Well, depth at tackle was a concern coming into the season for the Bills, and that just became a bigger problem now, with Tommy Doyle missing the rest of the season with an injury to his left knee. It all happened during the Bills' second preseason game over the weekend. They lost 27-15. to Doyle missed most of last year with a torn ACL in his other knee. Well, it was a big celebration for a community member. Bob Coyne, the former president of the RPD Locust Club, turned 100 this weekend. Coyne has certainly made the most of the past 100 years, dedicating much of it to serving others. He is a World War II veteran, father of five, and a loving husband to his wife, who has since died. They were together for over 50 years. Coyne's daughter reflected yesterday, saying anyone who's met him loves him dearly. My father was um, always a jokester and he liked to play uh, practical jokes on people and my mother always said that um, when dad wasn't around she had five kids when dad was around she had six kids he worked a lot of nights so he used to take he used to take me to Girl Scout troop meetings he was the only father there um, he worked a ton of jobs they helped all five of us through college it, it was just it was a wonderful upbringing his family says he always said he'd make it to 100 years old his next goal 101 Lots of local families took advantage of the warm weekend and headed over to Wickham Farms in Penfield for their 7th annual Sunflower Spectacular. The farm offers tons of activities, including a corn maze, which just opened a little over a week ago. Guests we ran into say the 10 acres of brightly colored sunflowers are a fan favorite. Whether you stop to take pictures, cut your own fresh flowers for home, or just to get out, folks at the farm say there is something for everyone. Families come out and can can really enjoy uh, a full day of fun in a clean, safe environment, um, and and connect with with the farm. I don't think you know everyone gets to do that these days. It's a it's a unique place to to make memories. You know, out on the farm by playing together, uh, eating together, um, picking together, all sorts of stuff. The Sunflower Spectacular will be open to the public from 10 until 7 every day except for Wednesdays from now until Labor Day. Well, Liam's back with more on our yeah. weather, and uh, it was a great weekend to be able to get out and do stuff like that. Great weekend. I think you're going to have a decent day today as well. I don't think it's going to be the warmest day out there. We'll start temperatures out in the upper 60s, which is warm for this hour, but as you head into the second part of the day, we're only going to get temperatures back into those mid-70s. Of course, a couple chances for rain early on this morning. Maybe some areas of patchy drizzle, some light fog around the region as you watch a cold front begin to make its way through. That'll be here and gone, and of course, in its wake, we'll see things begin to cool off quite a bit more. High temperatures into the mid 70s today. We'll see temperatures back into the 50s, maybe even near the 40s in some areas as you get into tonight and tomorrow night. And temperatures back into the mid 70s tomorrow as well before we start to warm things up and see more unsettled weather make a return towards the end of this week. That'll lead us into a bit of a warm up before we go right back down into next weekend. Bit of a roller coaster, really, for yeah. this week ahead weather wise, at least. Hopefully, not for the rest of your life. Right. Hopefully everything's going smoothly. <laughs> I hope. We really haven't seen much <laughs> hot, hot summer weather this no, year. No, it has not been our year for it. But you know what? We get those every once in a while and we just got to roll with it as we go through. All right. Well, that is all the time we have for this morning. Thanks so much for watching News 8 at Sunrise. Our next update is in 30 minutes. CBS Mornings. Is Follow up. News 8 wherever you are on RochesterFirst.com, Facebook, Twitter, and on our app for news and weather.